moving from a service based company to a product based company he had a 3 month gap period where he upskilled and learned before applying over here consult mein kaise kaam karta hai what do you do on a day to day basis there majorly it was only a tech background only and the title is consultant i'm assuming this is my assumption on on a consult you know what happens is there's a big company they have a website that they want to maintain they don't want to maintain themselves so they give offload it to a tcs and then tcs a lot of engineers like 100 engineers are working on that mercedes website which has the worst code base in asp.net that you're working on is that true correct correct, correct. so college you are building how is things are going and why are you building this hi everyone and welcome to a new pod today we have harshit who initially joined a service based company and now moved to a product based company called brevo surprisingly brevo is a company i've used in the past for sending out emails and today i learned they had an office in noida where he is working we'll understand his journey of moving from a service based company to a product based company he had a 3 month gap period where he upskilled and learned before applying over here we'll understand the interview process and what goes into applying and getting into a product based company for a decent offer with that harshit uh, let's get into the pod would love to know more about you sure sure um i am based out of kanpur uh, i did my engineering from nit mizoram uh, it was electronics and communication engineering that i also got uh, like in a special round of counseling that happens after je so i just cleared the je mains and uh, got that opportunity and uh, from there i went to a service based company uh, and was working remotely there uh, was in a project but not quite getting a lot of work so wasn't very skilled on the real time projects and when they called on on site then i left i thought uh, i'm i'm very skilled enough and i can Uh, get another job easily, but uh, it didn't happen. Like I, had, I'd had to wait for like three, four months, and in between, I thought like let's try different, different things. Try hands-on projects. So got my hands into a bit freelancing. Uh, got the I was sharing my work uh, through LinkedIn. So got the one opportunity from LinkedIn. Then I got one contractual basis, uh, like so paying some some money uh, per month, and got to work there on a few projects. the freelancing project i had to live in between because uh, i was not like i i was not able to maintain both the things and during that time also i got to know about uh, cohort as well um where i joined but i did not uh, uh, like join any classes or something because i was juggling between uh, a lot of things uh, but the community it helped uh, a lot like community i was uh, on the twitter always and watching people share things so so it it drive it drive me a lot like uh, uh, so at my own pace i kept learning and uh, from there on i started interviewing went to a startup uh, that's a that's a no, it's in noida itself uh, that was a major learning experience i had uh, where i worked for 8 months and worked on a few projects from scratch uh, didn't quite like it but uh, kept pushing through and in a five odd months i was comfortable with the all the tech stack i was working on but majorly it was react and i thought of switching and then i switched to a current company and it's a product based company based in french france so yeah that's the journey very interesting so just to understand this well did you do any projects code you know push any live code or were you you know hands on back in college or even in your consult and if not you know consult mein kaise kaam chalta hai what do you do on a day to day basis there it was majorly it was only a tech background only uh, the title is consultant but you have to work on uh, a few things i was uh, initially trained on uh, c sharp uh, and uh, angular as well so i was preferring more of the front end side so i went for the angular part of the project um, so it's only the like kind of service based company and you have to work on the projects and not as such a consulting thing basically you have you are developing only so yeah majorly it's development only but but like so you said angular and c sharp which are you know you would assume them to be super uh, legacy of systems to build on so is it like i'm assuming this is my assumption on on a consult you know what happens is there's a big company like a bosch or a mm. mercedes so you know they have a websites that they want to maintain they don't want to maintain themselves so they give offload it to a tcs and then right. tcs a lot of engineers like 100 engineers are working on that mercedes website which has the worst code base in asp.net that you're working on is right. that true correct 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 so it was a uk based company uh, and uh, they had hand over the project to my uh, the company i was working for and we were building a system for themselves so yeah it was majorly that this was a legacy a kind of a code and uh, just i did not code much in college 
so i found it really hard because c sharp is uh, very related to java and it's very verbose so it was very hard for me uh, initially as well uh, angular was similar like basically i did not know much coding so i tried angular but could not quite get it and i found about react that i pushed through like uh, i used to set uh for a 2 3 hour daily because i know my pace how uh, how fast i can learn so just uh, kept it consistent and uh, in a odd 4 5 months i was able to grasp what the tech stack is and then the startup thing happened and that was a major learning curve so yeah that that happened here got it theek hai to after consult you didn't learn too much 2 3 months of break up skilling and then you got into your first job so what was the this first noida base company <clears throat> what was the interview process there um I was looking for the job uh, right in there, like uh, I was trying to find on LinkedIn or any other career pages. Uh, I found that uh, this company is hiring, and uh, just uh, DM the CTO on the LinkedIn, and uh, he responded. Then the interview happened. The interview was more of like one uh, uh, assignment was given. Then I solved it, and uh, based on that assignment, there was the interview that how did you do it? How will we change this? and uh, it went well and then i got the offer which was which i was not very pleased with uh, similar time i was interviewing with the uh, company uh, it was crickbus similar time i was interviewing with but uh, as the uh, it uh, joining date was approaching and they were somehow asking me to come to bangalore for the interview so i had to live in between and join this uh, like and uh, uh i didn't quite like it but uh, i when i look back it uh, was a worth it experience because uh, i pushed my limits uh, and uh, the learning curve like rapidly i could i could learn when i was working on the real base project and uh, not much with the lean team like two three people were there and uh, could build a product from scratch yeah got it of so the lean team that you joined you learned uh, you said react a lot here how did you apply for brevo um how did you learn ki there is a company noida that's you know a broad based company based out of india uh, and you know what was the interview process there <clears throat> uh i was following brevo for like 2 uh, 3 years before coming in here uh with when i was uh, uh, in the unemployment phase or i was upskilling myself i interviewed there that time as well and uh, i got that uh, through a referral and uh, i interviewed i failed in the first round itself uh but the good thing is uh, uh a year later i applied again and uh, the team currently i am working in uh the lead engineer is the one who had taken my interview back then so it was like a quite a circle uh, that came through uh the interview process was pretty uh, like uh, good enough like two two rounds were there two technical rounds were there um i applied i directly when i was not getting many calls i directly started emailing the hrs of whatever company i was uh, trying to work in i i emailed and uh, i was holding one offer that time as well uh, after the startup thing uh, it was one mg offer and uh, so i i mean emailed and I, the interview process was pretty quick uh, two interviews were there one first was focused mainly on the javascript part uh, so basically the input output questions etc um, and majorly it was javascript and few dsa questions were there as well uh, basic uh, uh, initially easy to medium level um then the second round happened second round was a uh, major um, my the projects i was working on for initial 15 minutes then uh, i had to work on a machine coding problem that they given i had to solve it and then explain the approach and improve upon it so these two round happened and that chat round and finally got it all right very cool how, when did you join bravo uh, it's december december okay and how what's the work life balance like what do you do on a day to day basis correct uh, so the work life balance was like quite a important thing when i was looking for a job uh, because uh, i was side managing other like uh, outside the work also i do a lot, quite a few things um, so the brevo work life balance is pretty good like uh, because considering it's a uk based company and they uh, like uh, take care of the employees and the uh, work life balance so pretty good after like working hours i do not have to think about uh, what's going on and we can just connect later uh, in the day or the working day and general sleep policies as well and uh, not too much pressure as as such because i was i am joining uh, it's a probation and it's ending in a week or so um, still there are no not much pressure uh, maybe a few teams can have can feel that pressure but uh, my team is pretty chill out and uh, the work is good 
um, major work is uh, basically handling other teams and getting the requirements and the coding part is not that challenging as I felt currently but uh, maybe eventually it will get uh, more challenging and uh, currently I'm just uh, circling things like getting the requirements and focusing on implementing them so major it's that got it. it's like a big company where there's a lot of practices and you know team Correct. collaboration yeah, they focus more, more on the testing part. So as a developer, you are building things and they are very particular about what is going in the production and the testing is pretty uh, like rigorous. Got it. What's the tech stack? Uh, I'm working in React uh, and the backend we have is in Golang. Got it. Go plus React. Good. Cool. Uh, does Brevo hire interns? Uh, is it like an internship season? Yeah. Uh, we rec- I, I could see like there were five interns recently hired. So yeah, they do hire interns. Yeah. Perfect. Cool, cool. Yeah, bye. I think that's all the questions I have. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, about the college you're building, what, how, how is things are going, and why are you building this, and uh, how is it going? Got it. Uh, on why we are building, it's like uh, very obviously, you know, uh, broken market. Uh, they're like very obvious broken market that people don't like. For example, politics. Like people know they're doing shady things. Uh, Real estate, there's like very obviously black and white money there. <coughs> Colleges are one such you know, very obvious market. Jaha, you know, you know, a college doesn't have hundred percent placement, but they're, <coughs> uh, you know, publicizing that fees are extremely high, like incredibly high. Uh, there's just you know, a lot. Some rich people have a lot of real estate that they've capitalized on and you know, built this thing. And parents sort of love a BTEC, which is why they're you know, it's very sort of a, seems like a win-win, but it, it isn't finally for the student. Like the student feels like uh, you know, by the end they didn't get an outcome. It's very, it's a very long process to get back the ROI from your college. Uh, so it felt like it's, you know, a market that has a lot of space for innovation. Um, and we're not the first ones doing this, like a lot of other <coughs> sort of coding at techs who got into this. Uh, and, you know, after a lot of market research and seeing that they're doing well, this is a proven uh, PMF. We felt like, you know, we're obviously positioned to try something like it. And then as I met more students from other old colleges and old colleges, I keep doing podcasts now, I always ask. The common theme of, you know, skills are not there, degrees there, it's very expensive. And leave the money aside. By the end, it's like a, by the anxiety that you feel when you get a three LP offer. You probably have felt that when you got a, you know, uh, into a consult. Uh, it becomes very obvious. Okay, you know, you did not four years. Very difficult to And I don't know why it's that's so difficult to to code during those four years. That's anyway something you have to do. Um, but that's why we felt we should do it. Uh, and you know, the thing is going to be very obvious. That me and other you know people like you are going to be there and teaching. Uh, so you know what you're coding, uh, what you're going to code eventually is what you're coding right now. Uh, so with that by the end of four years, you know, you, you're almost at the level of a senior engineer. Um, and I tried, tried this experiment called Super 30. I don't know if you saw it uh, to see if, you know, I can actually place people or not at such a high ticket size. Uh, that went really well. Uh, that's when we sort of thought of going all in here. When when we were able to receive around 25 placements in Super 30, to look like, you know, this is a market that's very easily broken, very easily fixable. To, to be able to issue a BTEC, you need like some 25 acre campus only then can you do it. So the regulation is tough. Uh, if you want to issue degrees, uh, and it's very hard to convince parents to, you know, let send their student to us uh, without a degree or with a BSc degree. Like it's easy to issue a BSc degree. It's hard to issue a BTEC degree. Uh, so that's been the biggest challenge right now, convincing people. You know, degrees don't matter, and they only matter for these two, three things. For example, a visa or a master's, where you know, which we have covered. Uh, but parents always have that trauma in the back of their head. Ke BTEC karne, even it's from if it's from a you know some. Swaminanda University, somewhere in, uh, I don't know, Odisha, people will prefer that versus, you know, ki hai, yeah. a new age college. That's been the biggest challenge. But we have sort of gone all in. We have committed a building in uh, in Noida right now for the next five years uh, where we'll be hosting it. So we'll see how it goes. We have uh, almost the number of registrations that we need. Like we need 100 people uh, to be able to, you know, just be a bet that makes sense. Uh, and, you know, for us to feel motivated enough to come campus, I think we'll reach that. Well, we're halfway there already. Uh, so as soon as 100 people come, we'll be good to go. That's how it's going right now. Yeah, very good. Um, this for Jamie, like uh, it's a big, big commitment. Like you can, you could have gone with the bootcamp kind of thing as well, but going for a four-year degree, it's a big step. And all the Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, major. If I could ask, like uh, it's a more important kind of thing. I, you like started alone itself, right? In this, uh, all the thing. Um, so how does it like uh, how do you how did you motivate it initially because after the 100 decks there or the cohort people started uh, getting to you like uh, you have a team parent but initially when you were making videos and initially doing things how did you motivate yourself and, and how what things it takes uh, to go all in uh, like alone 
Hmm, that's a great point. I think thankfully being a creator is a field where you don't need a team. You just need enough motivation yourself, which I had because I liked filmmaking. Uh, back in 2018, I released my first video, did really well. As soon as I restarted YouTube, my first video did really well. So, you know, that sort of helps. If there is some monetary or some eyeballs, something that you're getting, like if, if some random person starts YouTube today and 20 people watch their videos, they put out 10 videos, they'll stop. Uh, thankfully, things worked out for me because I liked making videos. And also they were doing well. Uh, so that kept me motivated. Eventually, I made a team. But like, I think for the first one, one and a half year, even in cohort one, it was the leanest team ever. Like, I had my first sort of employee after I started cohort one. And then second employee when I started cohort two. Uh, now it's a bigger team because offline requires a lot of you know, uh, manpower. But online is very chill. The creators, most creators look at any comedian, look at any YouTuber, look at, they can actually stay very, they don't need a team. Cool. Have a good day, bro. Bye-bye.